Hello guys, Axel Myth here again. And um, in the last two weeks, I actually, you know, despite you know this entire thing going on, I actually haven't completed an awful lot because um, work has kind of picked back up, and I've actually been like super busy and stuff. Um, you know, but um, what I have completed. Um, I've only completed a few things in the last two weeks. Um, I watched all of Yu Yu Hakusho season two. Um, just to give you my rundown thoughts, I really thought I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Um, I didn't think it was as good as the first season, but um, still pretty fun to watch. Um, I completed Super Mario 3D. Yeah, Super Mario 3D Land. Um, I mostly went back to this one because I I didn't like it initially. This is the game that actually got me into the 3DS. And the funny thing is that I actually didn't like it very much. And um, I think the reason... And um, I tried to explain it in my uh, Mario 3D World Let's Play. Um, but basically, you know, in other Mario games when I play it, it feels like more of a world, and in these games, it tends to feel like somebody just set up a whole bunch of random platforms for Mario to run in, instead of it being like an actual world or land, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I just, so I didn't really like it aesthetically for that reason, and that's still kind of there, but I can def but replaying it again, I can definitely see why this makes uh, people's top ten top 10s, um, uh, 3DS games. The 3DS is my favorite portable console, by the way, just um, in case you haven't noticed from all the 3DS games right here. And then the other one, um, I'm, I plan on making a review video of this. Um, I, I'm probably not going to go in as in-depth of it as, uh, say, Some Call Me Johnny or um, who else have I seen review it? There's, I don't know, there's two or three review videos I've watched. Um, it doesn't, none of those have changed my opinion on the game. Um, but, um, Metroid Samus Returns. Sorry, I, I can, there, this is a remake of the Game Boy game. And, uh, I think that in that, you know, that one's called, uh, The, the Return of Samus or something like that. So it's a little confusing for me. But yeah, so that's my uh, fourth uh, Metroid experience. And um, I'll let you know what I think in that video. Um, I'm not really sure when that one's going to come out. It might be, it might be a while. But, um, so, um, but the game that I've started playing at right, right after that, um, I haven't ha been recording it. I really should because I actually... Wouldn't mind making a review of this game, but I kind of figured since I'm not making footage of it, um, I just talk about it in like a vlog. Um, I haven't beaten it yet, but Luigi's Mansion 3, I was really looking forward to playing this. Um, the controls, like, I've heard some people say that, like, this is like the most refined Luigi's Mansion has been, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll admit it's not nearly as clunky as the first. But um, maybe it's because my Joy-Cons are drifting a little bit. But I just... But I've noticed that it... That when you turn off the uh, gyro controls, it really tries to be like this twin... This twin stick shooter. You know, it's, it's Luigi's Mansion. It's not a shooter. But it tries to be. But... Like, there's been times where I've, like, tried to aim Louis, you know, tr aim the vacuum in a place, and then it'll, like, you know, and then maybe it's because, like, Lu Luigi starts walking a little bit, but, you know, then I just kind of notice that, you know, he kind of brings it back down. But, um, I, turn I turned that off, and I haven't run, I turned off, basically now he's, you know, he strafes while he's, you know, while in vacuum mode, and I haven't run into that nearly as much anymore. But there's still the uh, time or two where it has happened. So, um, 
I think the controls are just a little faulty and not nearly as good as they could be. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2, I think, steals it for control. Um, I actually really liked the controls in Luigi's Mansion 2. Um, the other thing that I kind of liked in Luigi's Mansion 2 was the mission thing. Oh, and, you know, I wish that they did more with that in Luigi's Mansion 2. This is a review of Luigi's Mansion 2 by any means. But, um, basically in that, um, th there were, like, different sort of missions. And for the uh, four or five different mansions that you had to, to complete. But the problem with that is that it had you searching every room of the mansion for every mission because you don't know where everything is because you know it resets and you don't know whether or not that same place is going to have coins or not especially your first time through so um i kind of wish that they did a lot more of what you know secrets between the missions so like if you find a secret in the first mission that um that will then carry on to the second one, and then it'll stay there towards the end. But if you don't find it, that secret isn't there in the, the next missions. You know what I mean? Um, that's probably a horrible explanation, but that's just what I, that's just what I really thought. Um, to kind of tell you what I'm thinking, like in Luigi's Mansion 1, going back to that one, um, there's a, in uh, Chapter 2, I think it is, there is this flower in the in the um in the doghouse by the doghouse that um sorry it's raining now and but um there's this flower by the doghouse and you have to spray it with water for it to grow and when you get into the next mission it'll grow more and then you have to water water it again and then by the fourth chapter, mission, whatever you want to call it, in Luigi's Mansion 1, the flower will be full grown and then you are able to get more treasure from it, from where this plant leads you. And um, I just kind of wish there was more of that in Luigi's Mansion 2. Um, but, you know, in Luigi's Mansion 1, if you don't do that, it, um, it'll wither. If you don't water it in the third mission, it'll wither. And you, you know, you don't, you just miss out on the treasure for the rest of the game. And I kind of wish that there was more of that in Luigi's Mansion 2. But, um, Luigi's Mansion 3 kind of does what number 1 and number 2 does, um, combined. Um, it's kind of a level by, you know, a floor by floor, uh, basis. And, um, it really just makes it feel like, you know, individual level, like, individual Mario levels, like, say, um, World 1-1, one, one, World 1-2, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I've really, but I still had a lot of fun with this game, um, despite the controls not being what they could be. Um, check it out. Check it out if you haven't, if you're even interested. Um, but that is definitely the game to get into Luigi's Mansion. Um, especially if you're, like, this video isn't catering towards kids, but if you have a kid, um, I'd say that this is probably the least scariest Luigi's Mansion, and I definitely recommend it for kids. Um, so despite this time, I also have a few pickups. Um, I have a... I actually still have a few things on the way. Like, holy crap, I still have things on the way. Um, they just haven't been here because, like, they're from, like, a few of them are from limited run games. And um, you don't actually get, like, you buy it, you pre-order it, and then um, you don't actually get it until, like, three or four months after, two or four months, I think it said, after the pre-order is done. I think that's ridiculous, but whatever. Um, and then I also ordered another surprise that I'll make a review video of. Um, it's not, a, and it's not a video game. Um, I'm really excited for that one because it's going to be awesome. Trust me, it's just going to be awesome. Um, but I, there are, but there's a few things that have been opening up uh, this this week as I am recording. Um, 
Yeah. And um, so I was able to go to a few different stores, and or at least a store, and uh, pick up a few things. Um, I actually sold one of my old Lego sets. Um, for those who don't know, um, because I don't think I've ever mentioned this, I, I have a Lego collection that I started back in, a small Lego collection, mind you, that I started back in 20... I think it was about 2007 that I actually started collecting Legos. And then um, I kind of stopped at around... I think the last Lego set I bought was um, when the Lego... When Lego Star... No. I think it was 2014. So about seven years I had collected Legos. Um, which is where a lot, of, like a lot of people, spend their money on games when they're kids, and I spent mine on a whole bunch of Legos, man. Lego Star Wars was my thing, um, but I actually, uh, but I sold. Um, I had a Slave One, which is Boba Fett's ship, and um, I also sold my Star Destroyer, so I was able to buy a few things. Um, so that was so that was awesome. Um, so the pickups today. Um, I'm gonna kind of keep it in order. I'm, I'm trying to surprise y'all, okay? I'm trying to surprise y'all. Okay, so first off, <laughs> ironic that I'm talking about Legos. I did not plan this. Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga on the DS. Um, the thought process behind this one was, I have actually owned this before. But I don't think I really gave it a proper chance. It was around 2012 when I was, no, I got it around 2012 or 2013 when I started getting over Legos a little bit. I still bought um, Jabba's, uh, pa Jabba's Palace from, uh, I think it was 2013 that I bought that. But I was starting to get over Legos a little bit. And um, I never really gave this game a proper chance. Um, it was, it, it's the DS version. It's obviously a lesser version of the console versions like the Wii, the 360, and the PS3. Um, but I'm really excited to go back to this one at some point. Um, I'm probably not going to go for 100%. That's just, I'm not a completionist. Okay, so this next one, um, I've stated it before. I am a new Resident Evil fan, but I bought Resident Evil 1 on the GameCube. Um, it's not the original case. In fact, if you real, look real hard here, it's not even the original cover. But I, I deal with what I can handle. I deal with what I can get. And then, I didn't know this, but this actually comes with two discs. And I think I have it upside down. Are you serious? <laughs> I have this upside down. Oh, my word. Get it together, man, right? I have it upside down. I thought I put it upright. I thought I put it upright. What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? <sighs> Sorry, guys. I. Oh, my word. That's embarrassing. I cannot believe that. Mm. But yeah, it comes with two discs. I was, I was actually really surprised about that. Um, I think it's really cool. I'm really excited to play this. This is probably my first um, duo disc again duo disc game because I picked it out first I'll get to that in a second and then Resident Evil 2 on the PS4 15 years later after the GameCube version now the place I went to media exchange they also had it for they also had um, the classic collection which is Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1 on the PS4. But I kind of just wanted it for the original console it came on. I wanted the... I didn't want the PlayStation experience because, um... I don't know. I, um, I didn't want to go back that far for Resident Evil. I, um, I, I still might for... I still might for maybe just the first game. Or, but, or I might do it for the third game. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll see about picking up... At, and trying at the PlayStation 1 versions at some point. But anyway, um, I bought Resident Evil 2 on the PS4 because that's the system it came out on. That's the system. That's the current gen system I have. Um, 
I'm really excited to play this one because I've heard that it's spooky and awesome and stuff. Um, the other thing, less exciting, a um, for those who can't see, <laughs> maybe I should just take it out this far. It's a PlayStation 1 memory card um, because like the funny thing is that I've never actually I never actually grew up with the PlayStation. Um, I was a Nintendo 64 baby and um, my parents actually didn't really like Sony much. My dad still has his problems with Sony. Um, over expensive and not enough quality, you know what I mean? Um, and then Final Fantasy 7. Man, I've heard so many good things about this one. Um, despite the mistranslations and the errors, and uh, the remake just came out, but I, but for some reason for this particular one, I just had it in my head that I needed to play the PlayStation version instead of the remake. I don't know. I don't know. It was it was just something that I really wanted to do. Um, this is my second PlayStation game um, ever, and I'm really glad to have it in the collection and I'm really hoping to play it and um, I'm this is actually one that I really hope to do a review video of um, because I feel because like so many people say that this is like a must play if you're a gamer you know what I mean and yeah I've heard so much praise for this game but yeah going back to that Sony thing yeah I, I never you know it's kind of weird but um I grew up with a Sega Saturn and a 64, not necessarily at the same time because the Dreamcast was well and dead when we got a se when uh, my oldest brother got a Sega Saturn. So um, I'm actually more nostalgic for Sega Saturn, despite not owning one. And I'd really like to, but I probably never will, just because of how expensive the games are. Even even importing stuff from Japan, that wouldn't be super bad, but. It's just not something that I really want to do, and then I'd have to be super careful with what with what games I want, you know, I want to buy, and uh, it's just not something I want to do. But yeah, I'm so yeah. Um, and then my first PS One game is Star Wars, um, Masters of Terrace Kasai or something like that. That horrible PlayStation One fighting game. Um, everyone, like, everyone I've seen review it said it was, it's just terrible, but, it, you know, there's not much I can really do about it, you know, I was a kid, it was Star Wars, it was Star Wars for PS1, and, um, I believe the thought process at the time was, um, we had just gotten a PlayStation 2, this is after the PS3 and the 360 had just come out, and we had just gotten a PS2 because my older brother, not my oldest, my older, you really have to, like, I'm sorry, to sidetrack, you really have to pay attention to that because older and oldest are two different people, okay? Just so you know. Um, but... He really wanted one, so we got one for him, and um, I, I ended up playing it the most, honestly, but um, especially later on, but um, so we just got a PS2, and uh, we went to this retro gaming store, I don't even think that they're open anymore, but um, I was told I could get a, any any game, and um, obviously, you know, with it being the new system that we have, the new new thing in our house, um, our minds were set on that. And my little brother got a Digimon game. Um, if I saw it, I could tell you it. But I, if I could, if I saw it, if I could just see it, I could tell you what game it is. But I don't remember. And then I got Star Wars uh, Masters of Terrace Kasai. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I had seen... You know, I probably wouldn't have because I really liked the characters. Um, I, pro I was going to say, I, I probably would have bought like Star Wars Starfighter or something. But come to think about it, probably not. Because um, the thing is, is like... 
I like the look of the vehicles in Star Wars, but I am not a giant vehicle person. I am a character person for some reason. Um, so, like, so, like, especially in Star Wars, you know, I hear so many people say, like, you know, I really, you know, they're, they really want, like, they really wonder how it works. And it's like, you know, to me, I look at Star Wars stuff and it makes sense that it works. But, um, and I really like, and I really like the designs and I like different, de you know, the different designed vehicles and stuff. But, um, especially when I was a kid, that wouldn't have sold me on a game. You know what I mean? I know it's kind of weird, but I like, but I liked say, I like the escape from the death. I, I would have liked the escape from the Death Star and controlling them escaping the Death Star than I would have uh, playing the end of A New Hope. You know what I mean? With the starships and everything. I don't know. That was, it, was, it was just weird. So, the, um, yeah, that's my first play, PlayStation 1 game. And I could never save it because I never had... This is my first PlayStation memory card and... Um, I bought that game. I had just gotten in. I probably just got into Star Wars, and um, if the Wii was already out, um, it would have been about 2006. So I'd have probably been about 10. So about 14 years later, I finally have a PlayStation One memory card, and it only cost me about six bucks. Which kind of brought up this weird thing I just thought of um, earlier. There's actually a few things that. I've, I've thought of throughout the week that I want to um, talk about. But um, first off is um, why aren't third-party companies still making memory cards for old systems? Um, let me explain. So like the GameCube, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, even the 360 has one, but um, I believe the Xbox does too. But anyway... Um, I'm just curious as to why third-party companies aren't making memory cards anymore. Because at some point, um, because I know that there are a whole bunch of different collectors who have like five or six or ten memory cards. So those are the th so at some point, you know, this six-dollar PlayStation memory card could be as much as you know thirty and forty, and just for the memory card, just to save some of the games. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm just wondering why there isn't at least some sort of market for th uh, third-party memory cards anymore. I don't know. It's just something. And then another thing, um, these are just a couple of game ideas that I, I, I had just kind of thought of throughout the week. Um, I, You know, while I'm at work, I like to think. I think a lot. I talk to myself a lot. I know that's kind of weird, but it's actually me. I know it sounds weird, but it's actually me planning videos and planning scripts that don't normally end up actually in the videos because by the time I get home, I forget them. But um, there's a few things that I remember. Uh, one of them was um, a Zelda shoot 'em up, like you know, a um, like a horizontal. Uh, Zelda shoot 'em up where Link is on a uh, um, loft wing. Where Link is on a loft wing, and you know he's just shooting at um, maybe other loft wings or just flying enemies from Zelda. You know what I mean? It, I don't know that one. That one I thought of a while ago, like a long time ago, like a, a year or two ago, and I actually sent. And it was just like a homebrew idea, and I actually sent that one to John Riggs because I was like, you know what? What if he? What if if there was somebody who could make a homebrew game like that? It, it, I thought it would be him. So that was just a, an interesting thought I had. Um, and then this one was um, um, this one is about the '64, and I was just wondering, like, why wasn't um, why didn't Metroid have a '64 game? And I was just kind of thinking about it because she's in because Samus Aran is in Smash Brothers and um, you know and then you know Metroid Prime came out um, a few years after that so I was just thinking if there was a Metroid game on the 64 what would it look like 
And then it just kind of hit me, like, what if it played like Resident Evil? You know what I mean? And then it kind of, and then, I, what if it, you know, you had this Metroid game that controlled and kind of had the aesthetics, or at least the same lighting and mood as Resident Evil for the PlayStation? I don't know. It was, it, I don't know. It was just something I had thought of, and I thought it was interesting, but it doesn't mean it actually is. Um, it might not be to you, but, I don't know, it was just interesting thoughts to me, and, um, and I think the biggest problem with that Metroid game would be the cartridge space, um, maybe, but, because, you know, I'm, I, I say maybe it's the cartridge space, but then I kind of remember Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Donkey Kong 64, you know what I mean, those are big games and they're on the 64 what you know why couldn't they do an a uh, resident evil style metroid with a lot more exploration you know what i mean so yeah um those are just things that have kind of happened recently or i've thought about and um i even you know i kind of like talking about and kind of documenting, if you want, if you will, um, just some of the stuff that I've, you know, just some of my experiences in gaming. That's why I'm doing these gaming vlogs. Sometimes I can't think of something to talk about, but I, but I also like, you know, again, documenting, if you want to call that this that. Uh, when, when I pick up games and where I pick up games sometimes maybe I don't really talk about where I pick them up but I do talk about but I at least have it in my laptop what date I'm doing these so I can kind of go oh okay so I bought these around that time you know what I mean or between this and this date for, for some reason um so you know what so, what I want you guys to do is tell me, like, some of your experiences with gaming, and, um, what, you know, tell me what you think of any of the, the, uh, you know, things I, I you know, I've beat recently, or some of the games that I've bought. Tell me about those. Um, tell me about all of it, if you've done all of it, but, um... I'd love to hear from you guys, and if you want to see more from, from uh, more of this, keep watching, keep like, you know, like, subscribe, you know, whatever, and um, I'll see you guys later.